Hi everyone, I'm Monique with Happy Eats Healthy and today is uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Today's Wednesday, we're making a veggie Buddha bowl with some quinoa and a really delicious uh, pistachio orange dressing that I'm very excited about because it comes together really easy. So let me know, we're just getting started. I know yesterday we had um, some very serious audio problems, so I apologize. I think we have that resolved. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you're out there and let me know if the audio is working today. Because if not, then I think we need to stop and solve for that first. I see a few people popping on. Give me the thumbs up on that on that tab and let me know if you're um, if you can actually hear me pretty well today. I'm working with some beets right now. I'm working with orange colored beets because they're so pretty. Right, just wait to get some confirmation here. See if we're hearing from anybody. Got a few people joining us. Sam, Luann, Natasha. Hi guys. I think you don't even hear me. You guys got my audio today. You know it's hard to uh, to be an independent business. And you don't have an IT department, so when things don't work, um, you're, you're kind of stuck on your own. I mean, I'm a little bit lucky because I have Dave around to help, uh, but when he's busy, um, you know, I have to I have to wait, I guess, with IT, too. My computer actually uh, blue screened on me, blue screen of death this past weekend, so we had to reformat it. So I'm having just some issues with those um, microphones that I maybe had installed before. What did I have installed? I can't quite remember all of it. <laughs> it takes a while, right? It's just the worst. Okay, I'm peeling the outside of a beet, and uh, over here, I see my uh, broth is boiling. I'm going to turn this down for a second. Just check in, make sure you guys got me. Ooh, Christine's on too, and all good. Awesome. Thanks, Christine. So, guys, uh, we're making a veggie Buddha bowl. I'm making some quinoa. I'm going to roast some veggies. So, over here, I've got some broth that's just, I wanted to get to a boil, and I'm going to rinse my quinoa. You guys rinse your grains. Yes, no, maybe. There is a bitterness that can come with grains, especially quinoa. If you're a super taster, you're going to taste a little bit of bitterness with your quinoa if you don't rinse it. Make sure I'm in my screen. Right. So I'm going to give that a really nice rinse, even if, even if your package says rinsed, I usually give things a rinse anyway because there's just, you know what, I think it's grains, there's always just a little bit of a, of a, a powder or residue on them, and it helps to just give them that nice rinse. Okay, so I've got about a cup of quinoa here. Get it all uh, into my pot. And I've got uh, two cups of broth. Now you could just do straight up water, works great. I've got all this homemade broth that I've been making from all these vegetable ends. We've been talking a lot about that. Um, and so I'm using broth because it's gonna give a little more flavor in there, right? Every time I can add just a little more flavor and not just flavor, but I'm adding nutrients too. A really simple way to add some nutrients to your diet, especially if you have some kids, um, husbands, <laughs> friends that are, are huge uh, veggie lovers, uh, wives in some cases, um, the one of these sexes there. Uh, it's a great way to sneak in some nutrients, right? Do that broth and, and uh, cook all of your grains in it. So that's a uh, stewing away. Bring that back up to a boil, and then I'm just going to take it down to a simmer. That takes about uh, about 10 minutes for, for quinoa. I like to leave it at 10 minutes and then let it steam for about uh, 15. So I might push it a little faster today. All right, guys. I'm working with these really adorable little um, orange or yellow beets, um, and I just think it's so it, it's sort of sunny for these days where it's been a little bit gloomy for us. Now, most people, when you when you do a beet, I do like the orange beets um, because also your hands don't get quite as red with the red ones. Although, honestly, if you don't have gloves, just just uh, peel them and your hands get red. It's going to wear off within like a day or two. Plus, it's always fun just to post on uh, Facebook, hey, look at my hands. Guess what I was doing? Um, most of the time, we're going to take beets and we're going to wrap them up and we're going to put them in the oven and roast them. And they take um, about 45 minutes to do that. Today I wanted to get things done a little bit quicker, so what I'm doing is I peeled the outside of them and I'm going to just roast them on a pan all chopped up. So I'm just dicing them into these nice little sort of bite-sized pieces and we just want to be kind of consistent with those with those pieces as much as you can. That feels great though. Anybody a beet lover out there or anybody not a beet lover? That's always interesting too. I remember I was doing a dinner this uh, past summer 
And uh, see, so there we go. That's that's boiling. So now we're going to bring it down just lower it to a simmer. One of the entire courses was uh, was beets, like some fresh beets out of my garden, and uh, I think out of of 12 people at the table, um, no, there might have been like 15. I think like two people actually like beets. It was very sad because it was hard to like throw away beets. Like I think people were like, eh, it's good, but I'm just not a beet fan. It happens. Um, so what could we use instead of beets? Well, this is sort of that pantry cooking. We're using up anything that's in the refrigerator. Cauliflower, I mean, that's a great thing in, in just Buddha bowls. All we're looking is for some roasted veggies. I found a couple of Brussels sprouts. So I'm just gonna cut those in half. Make sure I take off the little edges. Of course, I'm saving all my little edges. Um, I usually keep a bowl somewhere near me when I'm cooking and I throw all my little bits and parts and edges in it. And then at the end, I put it all in that um, in that freezer bag. All right, I'm gonna cut down my Brussels sprouts. And then I've got some um, broccoli. I just can't go wrong with broccoli, right? And I'm gonna leave this broccoli into sort of some bigger chunks here. Just cut that up. I think when you roast vegetables, uh, it's so easy to roast vegetables and just toss them with a little bit of oil. You can do uh, you could do ghee. You could do a little melted coconut oil, uh, depending on the flavors that are going on in your dish. Uh, or you can do just a little bit of olive oil. I like uh, avocado oil works really well too. It manages that high heat quite nicely. All right, so there we go. I'm just throwing on some veggies on the pan. I'm gonna give them a nice little spritz, my little olive oil spritzer. I try to get them pretty well coated, pretty well coated, lightly coated. Not to be heavily coated at this stage. Guys, tell me what's in your refrigerator that you're hoping to use up, right? I know we all have little pieces and parts and ends. I think some um, carrot, of course, would go really well in here as well, too. I've got a rutabaga, but I think I'm gonna save that. Um, I've been kind of wondering what I wanted to do with that rutabaga, and I think I wanna turn it into pasta for tomorrow or this weekend, so look for that one. That's it, we're dropping this into an oven. I've got the oven set at about 425. I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit uh, so that I can get that going a little bit faster. Let me just check in over here. See if I have any questions for anybody. Hey, Becky's with us too. Hi, hi, Robert. Hi, Cam, hi, Stu. Hi, everyone. All right, so uh, just to recap, we're making a veggie Buddha bowl, and I have um, some quinoa cooking over here. I went with quinoa. I haven't been cooking uh, with quinoa yet um, throughout, uh, throughout our time together. And I've been kind of itching to it. I like cooking with quinoa. It cooks really quick, so that's one of my favorite things about it. Now, I did about a cup in here. Um, oftentimes when I do quinoa, I'm going to double that so that I can have this for a little bit later, too, so anytime I need a little something else. So that's just simmering away. I put it with broth instead of water today because I've got that broth and I want to add some more nutrients in there, right? Now let's talk about, and then um, and then if you just, just joined, I have some veggies roasting in the oven. Usually roasted veggies are gonna take about 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna probably pull those out a little bit earlier because I wanna get them, get them going. I know you guys don't have all day to spend with me. A few minutes of the day is nice that you're here with me. Um, but, uh, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take all these pieces and parts and I've got some other accoutrements we're gonna talk about. Pile them all into a bowl and it's gonna be delicious. And one of the reasons I love doing these Buddha bowls is, especially when you have a family, you can lay all of these pieces and parts out and let people assemble their own bowl. So if I want to have little, oh, I've got some dried apricots here. If I want to have some dried apricots in my bowl, I can have them. But if, um, you know, if uh, Dave doesn't like the apricots, he can, he can leave them out. And the same with just the nuts, the seeds, the sprouted lentils, all of those kinds of things. Gosh. Anybody heard of a Buddha bowl? I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's been around for a little bit. Sometimes they're called glow bowls or soul bowls. Sometimes they're called different names. Anybody ever really had one? I, you can see them on menus a lot of the times uh, too. I love making them. They're great for like when you're doing food prep, like uh, at the beginning of the week. If you just make a pot of, of grains, it could be quinoa, it could be rice, it could be any of those things, set it in the fridge and then make uh, some roasted veggies, have those in the fridge. 
If you're eating protein, you could even um, you could roast a whole chicken. You could buy a rotisserie chicken. Um, I don't, I'm not even sure. Are they doing those right now? I, I, I guess I'm not even sure because I haven't really been to the grocery store in like two weeks. <laughs> they're still just cooking. We're still just mostly cooking out of my house. I snuck into one. I went for a walk on, I think, I think Saturday morning. And I think I snuck into one. One or two things very early in the in the morning, um, but you know, really trying to do the the stay at home thing, and it, it proves difficult. All right. Okay, so I'm peeling. I'm just peeling these little cutie oranges. I've got two of them. If you've got a larger orange, go with a larger orange. Just double check that you don't have any seeds in your orange. Right? That's a that's a, not something you really want to do unless you're going to really blend this really well and. Um, blend up those seeds and make those seeds creamy. You can do that actually with, um, you can do that pretty well with uh, lemon seeds, works pretty well with that if you have a really high powered uh, blender. Okay, we have our orange. I'm gonna save just a couple little pieces for the top. And let me get rid of my orange um, peelings. Now I don't really put the orange peelings in my broth. But what I do sometimes with my orange peelings is you could um, soak them, let them sit in vinegar, and then use that vinegar as, um, as a cleaning agent in your house. Like uh, using vinegar as an agent cleaning is one of the most simple and cheapest way that you can clean. And if you use the orange peel and just soak it in there, you have that nice orange scent and lemon works really well as well too. Okay, checking in. Have a quiet crowd today. How's everybody? I see Susan. Sue's been leading, uh, Sue's amazing. She's been leading um, every single day. She's been leading a plank challenge and also a work challenge. Uh, work meaning a dance. It's sort of a dance. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad that I don't have to show anybody how I dance. I'm not, I'm not really that good of a dancer, especially when I watch Sue. She's amazing. But yeah, I've got that link on, on my page. And if you want to join and you can't find that link, just holler, um, holler at me and uh, we'll let you know. But doing those planks every single day, I'm feeling it. It feels good. Okay, I just added in um, about a half a cup of pistachios. Now with the pistachios, I am doing, um, I'm doing the toasted roasted pistachios. I'm putting in a little olive oil, not a whole lot. This isn't like a huge olive oily, um, heavy oil dressing. Just a just a tablespoon, I think, is probably all about I just dropped in there. And then what I'm going to do is um, this is a little lemon juice. Now, instead of lemon juice, you could do a little uh, again. You could do a little vinegar. Now that we're talking about um, about the vinegar, get crazy and do something crazy like a sherry vinegar, but only a smidge. And then we need a little salt in here, just a little something to bring those flavors out. Um, and then the last thing. Oh, two last things I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop in. Um, I've got some of this nice honey in this cute little squeeze bottle. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of honey going in there. If you don't like honey, you probably could just leave it out. That little sweetness plays really nice with the, um, with the oranges, which are semi-sweet on their own. I suppose you could always just do a little drop of stevia, or you could add in a little maple syrup too. Before we go anywhere, I'm just gonna check our quinoa. We're looking really lovely in here. Okay, good. Um, and then what I've got is I have just a bit of uh, cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, just do parsley. I just happen to have a batch of it, and so um, so I've been using it up. Then the other thing, oh, it smells so good. I'm using um, some fresh mint. It's on its last leg, and I didn't want to lose it. Um, I was saving it for some cocktails, but I don't know if it's going to last that long. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just drop a little bit of that in here too. That mint and cilantro, what's interesting is, actually I have a little parsley here. I'm going to throw some of this in as well. That cilantro doesn't really taste cilantro-y in this uh, dressing. That mint gives it just a little flavor. Let's see if I have a little more mint. I'd like to get just another smidge in there. Nope, I think I got it all. I found all my mint. Oh, maybe that one. Maybe we have one little more piece of mint. Okay, guys, put this in um, a jar. I'm going to mix it with uh, my immersion blender. You could throw it in your blender. You could throw it in your food processor. And if you don't have any of those things, um, that's okay. Just chop the whole thing together. Just squeeze the oranges and then chop the rest together. Make sure when you're using your immersion blender, um, now we might also, I'm going to have just ready on the side a tiny bit of water. 
just in case i need to add a little water to bring this together you could use a little more oil too but if you're being cautious and not using too much oil um, then uh then skip the oil okay so i'm gonna uh, make sure that my hand is over the top of my container because this is probably going to splatter a little bit so i've got it kind of juicy in here <laughs> much in there I think. Okay wait, if that happens, mix it up a little bit. My oranges just needed to get uh, started. using any kind of nuts and seeds instead of using um, uh, yogurt or sour cream or dairy of any kind, really. That's it. There's our dressing. Now, with everything, uh, remember to taste it before you put it onto your bowl or just decide it's done, because now is the time to adjust it. If it doesn't taste good now, it's not gonna taste good on the bowl. And so we have to make sure that we at least adjust now. Oh my gosh. That little hint of the sweetness with the mint and then that flavor of the pistachios. Ah, I love it. All right. Shake your guy off really well. Put him back over here where he came from. I'm gonna give my hands a little wipe down. Those got just a little bit uh, splattered on there. So this is it. Can you believe, look how, um, Look how creamy this dressing is, right? It's a little, and, and it's thick too. I made mine a little thick. You could add a little water. You could add a little more um, orange. You could add a little more lemon. You could add a little more of that olive oil. Yeah, easy dressing. Are you guys surprised how easy that is? All right, just check more people that's uh, joining us. Oh, Keith says, hi, Keith. Keith says, I'm allergic to pistachios. So tell me what you have in your cupboards that you could use. Or tell me another nut that you're not allergic to. And let's talk about it. And I'll tell you the difference in different nuts and how they'll react. So throw something out there. Christine says, how much do you use your immersion blender? Trying to decide if I need one. Great question. I love my immersion blender, but the truth is I probably use my regular blender more often. Um, I find that I use my immersion blender for little jobs like this, and if I if I go out and uh, demo um, something in front of a, a group and I don't want to carry my big heavy blender, so if you have a blender um, and and you're living in a in a small place, a small condo in Chicago, mm, immersion blender it's a it's a nice to have, but it's not like I don't pull it out that often because I usually tend to make things a little bit bigger. But I really do like it if you are a single person. And you're only making like half of this dressing at a time. Um, that's when I like the immersion blender because this this small amount of a dressing isn't going to blend in your blender. Most blenders you need a little bit more uh, to blend them, and especially not food processors unless you have a mini one. So I do like it in that sense when I'm only making a teeny tiny little amount. And I think they're only, honestly, mine, I bought that, I think I've had that same immersion blender for over 20 years. Um, and I think I paid, you know, $20 or something really ridiculous for it. So would I get one? Yeah, I wouldn't give up mine. I wouldn't want to give up mine. How about that? Yeah. Keith, did you give me ideas there? Some other nuts? I don't want to lose, uh, I don't want to lose track of you. Okay. Um, mm, this smells so good. I'm going to get a little uh, dish to show you what our quinoa looks like. Now, quinoa is cooking away. When quinoa is cooked, when it's ready to go, it gets these little, I have to actually get my little glasses on to see. Um, it gets these little tail ends, almost like a little tiny sprout that comes out. Can you guys see those? Have you seen those when, you, when you've eaten quinoa before? You'll know when it's ready when you get those little sprouts that come out of there. Really great way to find out. Mm. It's just have some. I'm telling you, cooking with that broth gives it so much more flavor. It's so delicious. This probably needs another like um, two minutes. If you like your quinoa, I don't like things that get mushy. I like to have texture so, texture, so I undercook versus overcook. 
um and that's probably why i tend to do my quinoa more like ten minutes than fifteen. i think most packages call for about fifteen. so let me just check in here you're yeah, welcome you're welcome for that talk on the immersion blender thanks for tuning in um now what i'm going to do while that's finishing cooking i'm going to get my uh, my accoutrements ready for my buddha bowl so again digging deep in my in my fridge and i didn't even have to dig that deep i still have part of this cabbage that we've been working our way through uh we did um we did cabbage steaks the other day and i really like them i got a lot of text messages from a bunch of you that um that tried the cabbage steaks like that day and really loved them so i'm, I'm so glad i think i even saw somebody was making them twice today so that's uh, the second time already since we made them so that's great I just like a little bit of cabbage in my um, in my Buddha bowl because it gives a little crunch. I like things to be a little warm and a little chilled. So you have this nice little hot, cold mixture. So I'm using a little bit of cabbage. I'm just going to pop into my bowl. If you had, if you didn't have cabbage, uh, kale would work really great here. So just drop some, some uh, kale in there. Um, any other greens that you have, arugula is going to work really well too. Like, don't overthink. Like, you don't need to have what I have. These are just these are some things that I have, and if you happen to have them and can make them work in your house, awesome. Um, remember that I've uh, brought this out a couple different times. This is my watermelon radish. I love watermelon radishes because they're again so pretty. I love to cook with color. We should be eating the rainbow. Plus, we eat with our eyes, guys. Right? When you look at something, you want to make it. It, you want to be able to like be excited about it and want to dive in. And so I'm using a little bit of this and you can see I'm still using it. <laughs> it's still going here. I'm going to wait and put that on in a second. Now what I'm going to do, we're going to check our quinoa again. So I bet we're about there. And I'm going to turn off my, turn off my uh, heat here. And we're going to scoop out some quinoa. That's gonna go in the side of my bowl, over on the side here, as much or as little as you want. Okay, there's my quinoa, perfect. Now I'm gonna bring out my veggies. Let's take a look at them and see how they did. Oh yeah. Turn that oven off. Okay, I got my veggies out. I, had, I actually hit these on a pretty high heat um, just because I knew I wasn't going to, I didn't want to wait 20 minutes again because you guys have stuff to do. Um, you can see already, um, it's hot, but you can see that that broccoli is already nice and, and charred. So what I'm going to do, set this down and scoop a few of these into my bowl as well and just arrange these. I've got those Brussels sprouts. Uh, two Brussels sprouts cut in half, but that's like four Brussels sprouts, right? And then I've got uh, some of these nice golden beets going. Mm. Mm. Oh, they're so good just on their own. I love them. And honestly, that little 10 minutes that we roasted them, that was enough. That was totally enough to get them to get them really done. Okay. Whoops, set our veggies. Set our veggies over here. Now we're going to add in just a little bit of that, right? A little bit of um, these pretty radishes just to give it some of that color and some flavor. And then I, again, dug in my fridge and what do I have? Well, I had, I mentioned those um, dried apricots and I just happen to have uh, this little bowl sitting here from something we made the other day and I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was a lemon chicken. So there's apricots and then, um, I happened to the other day when we made that lemon chicken, I froze a little bit of chicken because I had a little bit of leftover chicken. If you're, um, if you're a meat eater, add a little bit of meat in here. Add a little salmon on top of this. I think the salmon and the orange would go really well together. Just checking in, make sure I'm not missing anything. Good. Hi, Laura. Laura's jumping in too. So we're making a veggie Buddha bowl, everyone. We've got quinoa that I, that I, uh, stewed in uh, broth instead of water to give it some flavor. I've got some roasted veggies. I've got some leftover chicken that I just, uh, that I just um, had in my freezer, so I defrosted a couple pieces. I've got some fresh cabbage in here. I still have this little bit of this, um, these sprouted lentils. Uh, you're probably not going to have them, but, but if you have some leftover lentils, sprinkle them on top. And then, um, remember we with me when we made pizza this weekend? 
the pizza worked out so um, fun. I had this little leftover pizza crust though. So I decided to give myself almost some little, um, some little tortilla crunchies, right? And I'm gonna set those just around the bowl. I put them in the oven. I, had, I wrapped up that pizza dough and just left it in the refrigerator for a couple days. And then right before this, I toasted it into like these little bread croutons. It's delicious. So just look in your, in your fridge, and if you don't have um, half of these things, this bowl is still going to be great. You've got quinoa, you've got the veggies, and you've got this really amazing orange dressing. And let's circle back to the dressing. Um, this was made with oranges, with toasted pistachios, uh, some lemon juice, a little bit of honey, uh, some salt, and um, oh, a little uh, cilantro and a little mint, and it's great. If you're allergic to pistachios, Look in your cupboard and just see what else can I use in my cupboard. Do you have cashews? Cashews blend amazing into really creamy sauces, and I use it really often. Um, you could use almonds. They, uh, they're they going to do about what the pistachios did. And the reason I like using pistachios in this versus the cashews is because I wanted a little crunch. I think it's important to really work on textures, guys, when you when you put these things together. So I went with pistachios because they don't get ultra, ultra creamy like the cashews do. And I also had this half of avocado left over from yesterday. We made an avocado crema and, um, and that was with the black bean and rice and the stuffed poblano pepper. It was so good that Dave uh, came out after I was done and we stood here and just ate off the, off the bowl and just like out and mouthed the whole thing down. And then later that evening, he made himself another, um, another platter of it and he put the whole dish inside of a, all the ingredients inside of a, a tortilla and rolled it up. So, so this is, you know, this is what we're doing. We're cooking to help you guys figure out like, what do I use that's in my fridge? How do I use this stuff up? Now we take that dressing and you're just gonna give it a dollop all over. I always give a little final of that extra virgin olive oil. Um, it's a really good fat for the body and it really adds a silkiness and a creaminess to everything. What do you guys think? Make sure you can see that. Really good, right? Doesn't it sound amazing? I think you're gonna love that pistachio dressing or whatever dressing, it's just you're getting the orange out of there. I feel like I need to take a little bite and just check in and make sure um, I didn't miss any other questions that answer yet yeah so guys veggie buddha bowl we did it with with uh, broccoli we have some beets roasted in here I've got quinoa that I made with broth and I've got um, and I've got cabbage for the freshness I've got a little avocado I snuck in a few pieces of leftover chicken I've got some watermelon radish in here and then it all comes together with that dressing mm. Mm. I really like the dressing even if you don't do anything else, you could take that dressing and put it in some salad or some kale or even over some roasted chicken. Huh, I think it's delicious. All right. Thank you, as always, for spending time with me. If you're watching this on replay and you have questions, don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, add them to the Facebook page. I'm there helping you guys cook through your pantries and your kitchens. We're going to get through this together and we're going to do it kind of healthy. Um, I'm Monique again with Happy Eats Healthy. If you're watching this on replay and you aren't in our Facebook page, Happy Eats Healthy with Monique on Facebook, it's a free group. Come with us. We're doing live demos every single day and answering all kinds of health questions. If you do make this, take a picture. Tag it out on Instagram or Facebook as, as Happy Eats Healthy. And um, that's about it. Thank you all for joining me. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. And sending you all much love out there. Bye. Thank you.